Welcome to this week's podcast. I'm Tim Weigel. I'm the statewide grape and hops IPM specialist with the New York State IPM program and also with the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program. Here today to talk again about spotted lanternfly, an invasive species which has really taken hold down in southeast Pennsylvania and we're hoping that it doesn't make it up here. It's a pest of grapes, hops, tree fruits, any number of ornamentals. It has a very wide host range. But the one plant that it really seems to favor is Tree of Heaven, or Alanthus altissima. And here is an example of a younger um, Tree of Heaven. You can see that smooth bark, it's got little um, white dots on it. One way that you can tell is that it leaves a good sized leaf scar. This is very indicative of the Tree of Heaven. Um, when we're talking about leaves, this is actually a leaf. It's a compound leaf, typically between one and three foot in length. Um, a real good way to tell if it's tree of heaven is to snap off that leaf and take a whiff. And if you've ever smelled rancid peanut butter before, um, that's what it smells like. Pretty nasty stuff. Um, if you cut into some of the older um, shoots in that, it'll actually be brown inside, kind of looks like the rancid peanut butter. So one thing we look at in scouting for the spotted lanternfly, luckily we haven't found any live ones in New York State yet, but we're going around and looking for the tree of heaven. As I said, spotted lanternfly prefers this. There's some question as to whether they can complete their life cycle and reproduce without feeding on tree of heaven. So we're trying to locate as much tree of heaven as we can. That's the places that we're going to be looking um, on a regular basis. And right now it's in the, the spotted lanternfly is in the egg mass stage. So there's really nothing to see here. But if we do get the nymphs and then the adults, one of their behaviors is they like to climb up and down the trunk of their host plant. So we'll be looking at the um, tree of heaven, seeing if we can see nymphs in that early in the season, moving up and down. When we get to larger trees, we can actually band those and use a sticky paper, the sticky on the outside, to capture nymphs going up and down. So we don't actually have to see them doing it. Um, we can come back and monitor the trees every week. And as the tree of heaven gets older um, or matures, number of years of growth, you can see where the bark, instead of being smooth and having all the little white dots on it, it almost takes the um, appearance of a, the outside of a cantaloupe and then it matures further. Tree of heaven can actually be um, mistaken or other species of trees can be mistaken for tree of heaven. Sumac is commonly uh, mistaken for tree of heaven and also black walnut. One real good identifier, we've talked about the leaf scars, but also if this time of year, if you go out and you look for the inflorescence, this is the flower cluster of the tree of heaven and you can see that it um, almost looks like a grape cluster with the number of small flowers on that. Whereas the sumac tend to have the more dense compact um, flower head, which we'll see here in a minute. This is sumac, one of the species that can be mistaken for tree of heaven. And um, you can see here the dense flower cluster up above. And typically the sumac will actually hold on to these all winter long. So you can even tell during the winter um, what it is. The new growth seems to be that it's almost a velvety feel to it because of all the hairs and that. That's something else that uh, the tree of heaven doesn't have. So when you're looking, um, you know, you have the compound leaves, but if you take this leaf and you crush it, uh, you're not going to get the smell of burnt peanut butter or rancid peanut butter. Definitely get a smell, but <laughs> not that bad. Another tree of heaven lookalike, or one that's often mistaken for tree of heaven, vice versa, is the black walnut. You can see the compound leaves again and again. Pull off a leaf, snap it, smell it. This does not have an offensive aroma like the Tree of Heaven does. Um, black walnut does have leaf scars. You know, we're talking compound leaves again. Uh, it has smaller leaf scars. 
this time of year, we can actually see that, um, and I don't know if you can zoom in close enough, but it's already gone through flowering and you can see that we are starting to get some nut formation here. So this is a much different flower than we saw in either the sumac or the tree of heaven. So identifiers, you know, you have a lot of compound leaves. These aren't nearly as hairy as the sumac is, but the inflorescence is going to be different. And if you look at the trunk of the black walnut tree, you can see that it's um, pretty gnarly. There's it seems like it almost looks like there's layers of bark, one on top of each other, heavily grooved and that. So there's, you know, look for the compound leaves that'll focus you in on this group that we've talked about, the black walnut, the sumac, and what we're looking for, the tree of heaven. Take that compound leaf, snap it, smell it. If it's like rancid peanut butter, you're probably on the right track. Um, but then look at, especially this time of year, look at the inflorescence. Um, with sumac, that dense flower pod or flower is going to remain through the winter so that we can easily get rid of that. Later in the season, the black walnut will have nuts on it. So that will be a good identifier. Later in the season, if there's not too many squirrels, you can look around and see if there's nuts um, below the tree as well. So if you're out walking, um, and you notice tree of heaven, you know, you're walking along railroad tracks. Right now we're Creekside and we found some of it. If you're in a wood lot and you see it, if you could just document where that is and send us an email at the email address that you see below here, um, we'd like to start documenting where tree of heaven is in New York State so we have sites that we can continue to monitor to make sure that this invasive species um, is not coming up into New York State. If you have any questions or you have comments, you have a webinar or podcast that you'd like to hear us talk about, please put it in the comment sections below.